Besides a cross-functional flowchart, another very common type of drawing done in Visio is an organization chart. For this I'm actually going to use a template. I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to look for Organization Chart. When I have a look for Organization Chart, I can see this template here, so I'll click it, and I can create it from scratch, or I can use one of the templates provided. But I'll do it from scratch, and I'll use Metric Units, and I'll just go Create. At this point here, it wants to know I want to create my Organization Chart from information I've entered using the wizard, or from information I've stored in a file or a database. At this point I'm actually just going to go cancel because I don't actually want to use the wizard, I just want to create an organization chart from scratch. So what we typically start with is an executive at the top. So I'm going to add my executive position at the very top of my diagram. Um, I'm also going to go to view and turn on my grid. Now with this executive position, I can actually click and type a name. So I'm going to put Mary Baker. And I'll go to Title, and I'll type CEO. <clears throat> I then want to add a manager underneath Mary. So I'll drag the manager shape, and I'll drop it on the executive shape. And that immediately puts that manager under Mary. And in fact, I need three managers, so I'm going to drag Manager and drop it onto Mary, and drag Manager and drop it on Mary. So I've now got three managers under Mary. This particular name, I'll put Peter Jones. This particular name is Paul Adams. And this name here, oops, excuse me, name is Paul Adams. And this title is in fact production, and this title is in fact sales, and this title is marketing, and this name is Carol Smith. So you enter their title and you enter their names. Now underneath Peter I want to add two positions. So I'll drag position and I'll drop it on Peter, and I'll drag position again and drop it on Peter again. So there's two positions now under Peter. Now this is what they call a right hanging, because these two positions are hanging to the right. But if I was to click on Peter and go up to my ribbon and choose the org chart ribbon, I can then change the layout using the layout button. And you can see at the moment it's a vertical right hanging option that's applied. I might decide to choose side by side and therefore those two shapes will go side by side under Peter. But let's have a look at the other layouts. I could choose perhaps this vertical left hanging, or I could go back to layout, and I could choose any of these options listed here. So I might just choose this one here, staff left. Again, I can put a name, so I click on name, and the name I'm going to put is Steve Wong. Oops, sorry, Steve Wong is the name. Again, it may pay to actually zoom in to make it easier to um, type Paul Knight. And I'm not going to put a title. So the title, I'm just going to put a space. Now, Peter also has an assistant. So I'm going to drag an assistant and drop it onto Peter. And Peter's assistant will appear here. And Peter's assistant's name is Alex Smith. And I'm just going to put the title PA. And so you continue to add the shapes that belong to certain managers. And then you change the layout, for example. There's also some various shapes up here, this is with 2016, that you can also choose from as well, if you don't like the style you've been given. But quite simply, if I decided to put three positions under Carol, I could drag this three positions and drop it on Carol. And suddenly I've got three positions appearing underneath Carol. I could then click on Carol, and I could change the layout to any of the layouts listed. So I might decide to go for um, yeah, single top. And so that's the layout that then applies those three positions. You can move a position. 
um, simply by hitting these move options. So I can move it to the left. So Carol's now moved to the left and move it to the left again and move to the right and move to the right. Or I could actually hit the minus and collapse those positions or expand those positions. This is the spacing. So I can space them out more and more with the plus and collapse more and more with the minus. Okay, I can relay out the organization chart if it's not fitting very well and Visio will offer to relay it out for me. So it best fits on the page and I can even choose best fit to page. Um, I have the option to change a position. So if I was to perhaps grab a vacancy and put it under pool. So there's now a vacancy under pool and I might just um, relay out. So under pool, this vacancy, I could change that position type to now a consultant. Or I could change that position type to now a um, staff. So each position has a different type of look and you can change that position type. But besides creating your organization chart from scratch, there is actually an organization chart wizard that I'd like to show you. In order to use the organization chart wizard, I've actually created an Excel file. And I'm just going to open that Excel file and show you. This Excel file here has a number of column headings. The person's name, their job title, who they report to, their department, their telephone, their email, and their office number. You could in fact just stick with the first three columns and you'd be fine. So you don't need these columns out to the right. But if you're wanting to collect more information just other than just name and title, you would collect that other information. The most important column is the reports too, because that's what creates the link. So Susan and Claire report to Joseph. Now having made this spreadsheet, let me close it, I can now take advantage of the organization chart wizard, which comes with Visio. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to New, and I'm looking for the organization chart wizard. So I'm going to click on Business at the top here. And when I go to Business, I will be able to see the organization chart wizard. But if you're in 2016, like I am, then you won't find the organization chart wizard. So you can go out of business and back to home. And what you can do is just click, just organization chart. In 2010, you look for the organization chart wizard. In 2016, you simply click organization chart. And then from here, we'll be able to go create. And from here, we'll be able to say, I want information that I enter using the wizard. All right, so this here is your organization chart wizard. You've got two options. The first option is what I want to start with, information that's stored in a file. So I'm going to go next. The three types of files that it can draw information from are listed here. And the one I want to use is the one that says a text file or an Excel file, and I'll go next to that. At this point, you need to browse and find that particular file, and I'm going to use the one on the desktop, that had all those people and who they reported to. You can specify a language if necessary, but I'm just going to go next. It's collating the information and it basically says choose the columns in the Excel file that, can, that contain the name, who they report to, and their first name, which is optional. Well, the name column in Excel goes to the name field. The reports to column in Excel goes to the reports to field. So I've actually called the columns in Excel the same names as what we need here. And I'll go next. <clears throat> 
The fields that I want to show in each box is the name and the title and maybe the department, so I'll add the department. You choose what fields you would like to show in each box in the organization chart and you can move things up and down as well and also remove. So I'm just going to go next. I can also then choose um, any shape data but I'm just going to go next. I can also then include, don't include pictures or locate a file that contains organization pictures and this is unique again this option to 2016 so I'm just going to say don't include pictures and go next. Uh, the wizard will automatically break the organization chart across pages and I think in the end it actually creates 11 pages with the name at the top of the page being the top executive. It will include hyperlinks which will make it really easy to navigate between the pages and it will synchronize the information. So I'm just going to hit finish and let it do its job. So it's now working through the various pages, creating the shapes and automatically linking them. I actually think that this is the better way to make an organization chart. doesn't matter how big or how small it is. If you keep a spreadsheet with the name, the title and who they report to, if you keep that up to date, then you can ask the organization chart wizard to quickly create an organization chart if there's any change in the personnel or the staffing in an organization. And it's a much quicker way of creating an organization chart than you trying to line things up. It's eventually getting there. Page 11 is now about to be completed. And here we have our organization chart here. Page 1, let me just um, minus the stencil so I can see more on the screen. Um, page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, and so on and so forth. So going back to page 1, we have at the very top Joseph, and I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Um, Joseph being the CEO and Susan being the PA. Here we have Ashley and Claire and Laura and so on. So it's actually created all the shapes necessary. Now when I rest on David, I can see that there's a hyperlink, which is something that we looked at earlier. There's a little world icon with a, a link. Now if I was to hold the control key and click, it'll take me to page two, which is the people underneath David. So I'll control click to go off to there and there's David at the top and these are the people that go underneath David. Now if I control click David I'll go back to where I originally came from. If I rest on Anthony, Anthony's here, John and so on and so forth. Connie has got a hyperlink, page 11. If I control click Connie then I can see under Connie there are six staff members and under um, Amy there's another um, group of staff members and if I control click Connie I'll go back to the original first page. So even if this created a blueprint that you then relayed out um, but it would make a large organization very quick to create if you use the organization chart wizard.